So we're here up at Coronet Peak, they officially closed on Sunday, so uh, four days ago, and uh, now it's Wednesday and they've decided to reopen for uh, two hours from 9am to 11am and uh, get to experience some of the fresh snow and powder that's fallen. It's kind of crazy. Better than the whole season right after it finishes. That was so cool. Coronet Peak was the first ski area to close for the season in Queenstown. Only days after shutting, we received the largest dumping of snow for the season. After a very warm season with little snowfall, the resort decided to reopen just a few hours for an ungroomed morning ski for season pass holders only. With no outside visitors permitted, the runs were empty and bare. That's beautiful. Uh, let's keep going this way. Being ungroomed, the slopes were especially soft and powdery, off pissed. <laughs> One more! <laughs> Plenty of spring activities planned, saying goodbye to winter was a bittersweet experience. I am going to miss this view. Last run of the day. Lifts are about to close. It's perfect. Tomorrow, up there. Best run of the day. Green spring grass, beautiful snow capped peaks. Francesco is hitchhiking. Beautiful snow, look at that snow. We should go down here. <laughs> With an extra week and a bit left before closing, we decided to take advantage of the recent snow dump at the remarkable ski area.
having the best snow all season felt like the heart of winter rather than mid-spring. This is cool, man. Early October, we celebrated Oktoberfest in Queenstown at Searchlight Brewery. Grateful to be in COVID-free New Zealand, as my thoughts were with friends in Munich who were missing out on the actual Oktoberfest this year due to the pandemic. After the beer fest, we headed to Miss Lucy's bar for a Brazilian themed party with an excellent samba band. One of my favourite spring activities is cycling, and whilst in Wanaka for a work trip, we took advantage of one of its excellent cycling trails. So here we are on the shore of Lake Wanaka in the town of Wanaka itself, We're making our way to Glendu Bay alongside the lake, looking at roughly about 27 kilometres return today, so it should be a couple of hours to get out there and back. Um, it is a really windy today, day today, so it is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but the sun is shining, so hopefully that gives us a little bit more spirits to get through and uh, push on through to Glendu Bay. With a bit of misinformation from the Trail Forks app and a bit of naivety, we were under the impression that it was going to be an easy trail. It wasn't so much the hills that made it challenging, although they didn't help, but more so the condition of the trail which in some sections were in desperate need of maintenance. The town of Wanaka is right behind me here in the distance and that's where we've just come from. And uh, Wanaka itself is actually built on a glacial moraine, which is basically gravels and rocks that are left over from the last ice age. We had two major glaciers in this area, the Makarora Glacier and the Matukituki Glacier that came through the area between 12 and 15,000 years ago. And the remnants are basically this sort of landscape that you see behind us here, this sort of bouldery sort of 
um, mountainous, hilly sort of landscape that's been carved out from the glaciers. Californian pigeon. There you are. That cool little hairdo. So up here we've got the uh, famous Roy's Peak Trail, Insta-famous I should say. Every person that comes to New Zealand has to get an Instagram or Facebook profile shot up there. We did that one when we first arrived actually, like almost two years ago. Another beautiful beach. Hey, okay. Feel the uh, gusts of wind out on the uh, lake as well. So that's where we're going, Chicky. We are surfing in here. Although the trail conditions were not fantastic, one thing we couldn't complain about were the views. From an aesthetic standpoint, having Lake Wanaka and the snow-capped peaks of the Mount Aspiring National Park in your backdrop, they make up an idyllic scene. Wanaka is known for its prevailing winds from the wild west coast and we couldn't have chosen a more fitting day to showcase its potential. The trail began to wind its way down to Glendu Bay, which is a serene cove that is only a 15 minute drive from the town of Wanaka. Well worth the visit if you're looking to get away from society. They even have a campground that Miranda and I stayed at last year. Here we are at the beautiful Glendu Bay, our final destination, or at least our halfway point. Right. Down here in Glendu Bay. Still waiting on Miranda. Okay. Center holiday. <laughs> camp. Holiday. How was that, Chicky? That, was beautiful that last stuff. part was beautiful. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. There's a little tougher than you thought. Yeah, I thought it was all going to be like that. Do you think 
you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like a really long version of the Jack's Point Trail. Yeah, the trail that I hated. It was very beautiful. I thought it was worth it. So uh, due to the terrain, um, the trail itself was a little bit more difficult than what we had expected. So we're actually going to take the road back instead. It took us two hours to get here and we're only expecting maybe an hour, hour and a half max. Um, so hopefully we'll get back on the road, which is quite flat in just under an hour or around about an hour. Um, hopefully no one's given us a parking ticket because our parking spot expires in about half an hour. Being mid-spring, the newborn lambs were playing in the fields and wildflowers were in bloom. The perfect time of year for a cycling adventure. We arrived in Wanaka much quicker than our journey out took and we were happy to find no parking tickets issued. A must do in Queenstown, particularly in the spring, is the Queenstown Gardens. A huge variety of flowers and plants, both native and from around the world. Giant sequoia redwood trees, a duck pond, and best of all, frisbee golf. Here's our introduction to the frisbee golf. Yeah. Today will be my day. Beautiful. <laughs> I oi oi the frisbee golf today. See, he's giving himself the right attitude even if it's false. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Seven. Have you played before, Gabriel? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the rules are the same as golf, yeah? Yeah, it's the same. 18 you, holes. You got a uh, part three in the first two okay, holes. Yeah. They're all three except two parts, three and yeah. four. Two part four, but it's very easy. Alright, first shot of the day, Francesco. You get extra points if you hit one of the people. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Straight nice. into the lake. <laughs> Alright, Gabriel. Instagram shot. Yes. <laughs> I like the colour too. Nice. You almost got her. All right, Margot, you want to film me? Carrying too much alcohol. Oh. <laughs> oh. Whoa, straight down. So the mandatory is that we have to go on the right hand side of that tree up there with the M on it. Yep. Mandatory redwoods here. Sweet. Watch out for the obstacles. Oh, that was a nice throw. <laughs> After switching discs, I soon realised mine was a dud and needed to purchase another one before the next session. Final day here at the Remarkables. Look at all that beautiful snow. We're gonna be grinding some stones today. Ellie, you ready to grind down on some rocks? Yeah, <laughs> Beautiful. 
ever full snow, isn't it, Ellie? Perfect. Ellie's already had his first fall of the day. Look at that. What'd you do? Oh, you split. Yeah, mine's split too. I'm gonna throw my gloves out. Closing day. Closing day. Oh man, it looks shite. Look everyone up there. We should just, we should have around bikes. <laughs> Not a cloud. It's different when it's actually going. <laughs> Ready to go? I can find something for one thousand. After officially saying goodbye to the ski season, we had one more springtime activity to undertake before Miranda and I departed for our two month camper van trip around New Zealand. We were lucky to grab a local special that Real Journeys were advertising on their TSS Earnslaw trips to Walter Peak Farm across Lake Wakatipu, with an all-you-can-eat barbecue lunch included. Thank you, Chicky. And there is Queenstown. Right in the distance there is home. All right. And this is the spread, the buffet. The barbecue buffet. Apple for the pork. That's ketchup chicken. Just so you know. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look at that barbecue. Francesca, look at that barbecue. Oh, that crispy corn crackers. I don't think I've ever been so excited in my whole entire life. <laughs> this is excitement. This is genuine awesome. happiness. Happy day. Happiest of all. Francesco's meal is just this. All right, Francesco, give us a review. What do you think? <laughs> The best. Mm -hmm. mm. Great view, great cider, just everything. $65 well spent. And we get a tour as well afterwards, don't we? Well, we get a tour around the farm afterwards. Be, uh, You're waiting for your food too. This guy over here, look, there's one right next to you. Lining up for the buffet. It's like, do you have worms? <laughs> I'd like some roasted grubs, thank you. Birds. So I'm standing here in front of the TSS Earnslaw, which is an old steamship which was commissioned in 1912. Uh, to take passengers up and down Lake Wakatipu. Now it was one of several ships at the time taking people along the lake itself and um, it is in fact the last surviving coal-fired passenger steamship in the southern hemisphere and we've caught this boat across today to Walter Peak Farm 
which we've just had a delicious barbecue lunch, all you can eat. Now we're about to watch a demonstration. After lunch, we were invited to watch a presentation on sheepdog training, which was really impressive. So even when I do send her back out, you can see she's pretty much opposite me, getting that balance is her natural instinct. So that's what it's all about. But now I start playing with her a little bit more, showing a bit more directional commands, because you can see they're starting to separate a little bit, which is kind of normal with these cool. hoggets. They're not the most experienced sheep, so I can just control this a bit more and interact with her to have a lot more control. directional commands really accurately. So we'll pop them in the yard and then we'll have a bit more of a clue. Look at this one. Oh, you want to have a part? You want a part, don't you? You know, you know. Hello. 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 Like they're eating your shoelaces. <laughs> I can't eat my shoes. Wait, wait. I don't think they. I don't know if they eat that. Oh, yeah, you eat that. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Hello, buddy. I got nothing to feed you, buddy. There's a deer. Oh, a deer in the back. <laughs> I don't have anything to eat. <laughs> it's like licking his lips. Good, no fool for you, <laughs> big dog. <laughs> okay, I'm on a video. <laughs> Got wet cow nose on me now. This is donkeys. Big 
Before leaving, we had to explore the farm and greet all the residents, including the spring newborns. Gotta finish with the cutest. Hey, baby cows. Hello. I got no food for you. I got no food. It's okay. He's <laughs> look at me. Oh, he's starting nibbling on me. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Good job. See you, Liz. Bye. Come on. Goodbye. You did a good job, too. <laughs> I can highly recommend this trip as a definite must do while in Queenstown. How is that, honey? It's good. Yeah. First one's a warm up one, Chicky. Yep. Oh. All right, Chicky. You're up. Oh, shoot. You almost got him. Almost got them. She was doing it on purpose. One last round of frisbee golf to try out our new discs before Miranda and I embarked on the start of our two month New Zealand camper van trip. Videos from that to come. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like and comment below. Also subscribe and hit the bell shaped notification button to keep up to date with the new videos to be added from our epic New Zealand camper trip.